Blazor and Tailwind CSS. This is a combination that I tend to use for all my applications and I really love it. But what about installing Tailwind in your Blazor web application since version four? Some things have changed actually for the better, but let's just do it here one step after another. So as you can see here, I have a Blazor web app. It's the default web app template with static server side rendering called it Blazor Tailwind version four. And the very first thing I know it might hurt, but you need NPM or Note. So please download Note, typically here from their website. So just download Node.js and then with that you get NPM out of the box. And as you can see here in the documentation, then you need this command. So let's just copy this NPM install Tailwind CSS at Tailwind CSS forward slash CLI. We want to use the Tailwind CLI to then create our final output cascading style sheet files, or just one file. So please install it. Let's do that together now. And by the way, I put all this together, all these steps specifically for Blazor in a short handbook. If you want to get this cheat sheet, this little guide, then just check out the link in the video description below. Here I am in the terminal and please, this is important. When you uh, have a look here, where am I? I am not in the absolute root folder, let's say. So when I go up, then you see here is the Blazor Tailwind version four folder and the solution file. And this is not the place where you want to install Tailwind. You want to install Tailwind right here. All right. So there where you see all the code files, just paste this command npm install. And then you will see that in my case, this is up to date. I already added uh, or installed Tailwind just to test it, but audited 27 packages and five packages are looking for funding. All right. Now the next step is to create your output file, but for that we need an input file. So how do we get that? Well, let's go back to Visual Studio and here typically I just create a new folder, call this thing styles. And then here I add a new item like input CSS, I uh, remove everything. And when we now go back to the documentation, we see that we have to add this single line here, import tailwind CSS. So let's go back. There we are. We save it and we don't need any other configuration file, right? Before with version three, we had to configure for which files Tailwind has to look for, or where it should search for changes like all HTML files, all Razor files and so on. This is not the case here. You can still configure Tailwind, don't get me wrong, but it is actually not really necessary. So already we can run the watcher to create our output file. In the documentation, it says this is the command. So let's copy this and paste it. Let me clear the screen again. And by the way, this page here is completely done with Blazor static server side rendering and also Tailwind. And as you can see here, currently, if you want to level up your .NET and Blazor skills, now is the perfect time. The spring sale is running at the .NET Web Academy. You can save up to 70% on any course or plan. So maybe you want to check it out. Link as always in the video description below. Now, what is this thing doing? You have NPX here comes with note at Tailwind CSS CLI. We're using the CLI dash I is the input file. It's different in our case. It's not source input. It is now styles input. But again, in your case, you can change that, of course. And then the output file with dash O here, I tend to use www root and then I call this thing Tailwind CSS. Typically, you could also call this app CSS, but we already have an app CSS. So maybe we want to do something else with that file. So I just use Tailwind CSS and dash dash watch. This means as soon as we save any file in our project, then the watcher or Tailwind is running again and creates a new output file for us. So let's run this. And there it is done in 228 milliseconds, a bit hard to read maybe. But now when we go back to Visual Studio, we can, for instance, in our, uh, let's say in our pages in the home page, let's just, I don't know, add an exclamation mark. And as you can see here, it 
again, created the output file. So let's have a look at the output file in www.root. There it is, Tailwind CSS now, and there is lots of stuff actually going on. But as soon as you need uh, or use a class that is not one of the default classes here, it will be added to the output file. But still, we have to do something. We can't use it for now. We have to also add it, of course, to our app eraser file. So down here, we see all uh, the links, let's say the link statements for our uh, files. And here now, we can, of course, copy this and paste this here and just use Tailwind CSS now. And this should be it. But let's try it. You go back to the documentation. And here, this is a great example, h1 hello world. So we go back here to our home page. And again, we just replace this thing and run our application. And there we are, we see hello world. And here it says text has a size of three XL font is bold and underline when I remove this, for instance, restart the application, not always necessary, we can also just use hot reload in this case, underline is gone. That's it. This is how you install Tailwind version four in Blazor. Hope you liked that video. Thank you very much for hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel. So I know that you care. And thank you very much for watching. I hope I see you next time. Take care.